Hi, I'm Bradley Caristia, a senior expert software engineer at J.B. Hunt Transportation, one of the largest transportation and logistics companies in the country. Given its inclusion by the CLI in every generated component, you would think that using testbed is the proper way to write unit tests in Angular. However, its impact on test isolation means that's usually not the case. Testbed is a tool that's used to create Angular components inside of tests. Test isolation is a principle that dictates all dependencies of the system under test should be mocked, stubbed, or otherwise faked. Isolated tests are desirable because they're highly stable, only breaking if the logic in the class that's being tested is incorrect. In order to use testbed, you have to build a valid module that the component can be rendered from. Traditionally, that's meant importing all the modules it depends on, providing any necessary services, and even declaring child components, which then requires their dependent modules and services to be added. With the advent of standalone components, this is mostly hidden by importing just the component being tested, but under the hood, it's doing the exact same thing. Once configured, testbed then renders the component, along with all of its children, and starts running the Angular lifecycle. This whole process ends up being pretty slow. Rendering the entire component tree, running change detection, and calling lifecycle hooks takes time, and when you have to do it before every test, the delays quickly add up. For example, a large code base that I worked on containing several thousand unit tests routinely took 20 minutes or more to run everything. Speed aside, this also means that the test isn't isolated. Additions to a child component's dependencies will nearly always result in every parent component's tests failing until they have also accounted for the change. On top of that, if the child component's behavior changes, any parent tests that rely on that behavior will have to be corrected. If it were an isolated test, that interaction would be controlled by the test itself, and so wouldn't break. This is a minor issue, though, compared to the impact testbed has on dependency injection. It's incredibly easy for concrete dependencies to sneak in unnoticed due to the fact that the real injector is used to resolve them. As with all Angular components, you can get providers from five places. The component itself, parent components, declaring module providers, any imported module providers, and root-level services. Again, the issue at hand is ensuring that developers don't accidentally let a concrete dependency into the test, since that means the test isn't isolated. Dependencies that come from parent components or the declaring module are basically okay, since the test has to provide them for the component to be constructed at all. The other three are problematic, though. Services provided by the component automatically exist on component creation. To make matters worse, to mock these, you have to use the fairly obscure testbed override providers method instead of providing the mock in the test module itself. Imported module providers tend to slip in because developers have to import the module for its components and directives, and root level providers don't appear anywhere in the test. They're just automatically injected unless the test module overrides them. Of course, careful analysis of the component, and don't forget all child components, can overcome this so that all dependencies are mocked. The point is that it doesn't happen by default, and it's extremely easy to miss something. Why do we care? We care because those dependencies represent unnecessary fragility and performance degradation. If updated business logic changes the answer, but not the shape, that a service gives a component, that component shouldn't care, and neither should its tests. In a more extreme case, unit tests shouldn't cause API calls to occur, or files to be downloaded. Unit tests operate on the principle that we can assume how the rest of the system works, and focus just on the thing that we're testing. Using concrete dependencies turns them into integration tests. The good news is, the solution to this mess is extremely simple. Just don't use testbed for unit tests. Construct your classes the old-fashioned way, with the new keyword. Doing so requires that the developer provide all the dependencies up front as arguments to the constructor. Because they all have to be explicitly included, it's immediately apparent if any of them are not a mock. By creating the class manually, the template is now a non-factor, and with it any child components. The same goes for the modules that were needed to resolve selectors in the template. Everything I've said goes double for services. With no visual aspect available, there's even less reason to use testbed with them. After converting that large project that took 20 minutes to run all of its tests, it now runs them all in under a minute. They unexpectedly break... basically never, whereas before, adding a dependency to a deep child component could lead to hours of whack-a-mole fixing of parent component tests that now needed to provide it. The time it took to convert them has easily been worth it. Testbed is useful because it allows a component's template to be tested. That's super important! but it's really the domain of integration testing. Integration tests are inherently slower and more fragile, which is why we write fewer of them than unit tests. So stop turning all your unit tests into integration tests. Remove testbed and reap the benefits of isolation. Thank you very much.